What's good, yo? Welcome to episode 32 of Making Games TV with soccer phenom Steve Riyad. What's up, baby? Tell them where you're from. What's up, man? Um, I'm from Egypt, actually. Like born in Egypt? Yeah, I was born and raised in Egypt. I moved to America when I was 10 years old. 10 years old? Do you speak it? Yeah, I speak Arabic better than I speak English. That's amazing. You need to work for the FBI. Possibly. Maybe. We'll talk about that later. So born in Egypt, came to America, 10 years old. What was that like? How was that transition? Uh, it, was, it was actually really difficult because, you know, I didn't speak English at all. Um, I didn't really have any friends, so it was a tough transition, but... How long did it take you to make some friends? Um, you are a likable guy. Not long. You know, like kind of cute. I was just playing sports and everything, you know. You got on the team. Yeah. That's awesome. It made it easier. So what sports did you play? Um, soccer. That's it? Only ever soccer? Only ever soccer. That's it. Ball is life. Ball is life. Soccer is life. Um, cool. So let's talk about your soccer career now. So where did you play high school? Um, I played high school at Freedom. Freedom High School, local Bethlehem area high school. And uh, you didn't, we're not in college now, so we've transitioned into where are we at now? PDL? Yeah, this summer I played in the PDL, just the top U23 league in North America. It's only the top one in North America, you know, the PDL, whatever. <laughs> and what's that stand for? Um, the Premier Developmental League. And you were telling me it's like it's not minor leagues, it's like a it's step like, above it. It's the path to the pros, pretty much. Path to the pros, big dreams. We're on the cusp of that stuff, huh? Hopefully. So hopefully, absolutely. So let's talk about while you're on the show, you're you're in here making gains, grinding. Like, like what's your mindset? You know, you're you're so close to this stuff. Talented young man. Like, like, where does your grind come from? What's your mindset? What's a day in the life of I'm, Steve? I mean, like, pretty much, like, this has always been my dream since I was young, like, being born, like, in a third world country, uh, you don't really have much to live for besides, like, your family and uh, whatever passion you have, so, like, every day, like, I woke up, you know, I went to school, and as soon as I got back, all it was just, you know, I ran out to the street, just started kicking the ball around, a little sock. There it is. A rubber ball, and just, you know, so. A, so just, a sock? A rubber ball and a sock, is that what you said? Yeah. And where's that? Was that back in Egypt? Yeah. So you you picked it up way back there? Yeah. And like, it's just, Did you have shoes? I imagine you like playing soccer bare feet. Well, we had like one pair of shoes and you had to wear that in school and church, so you couldn't play soccer within the street. Oh, no. So no no had soccer to go shoes. barefoot. Nice. You don't want to see these toes. Oh, I don't want to see those toes. <laughs> nice. So soccer forever. So now, so what's like, let's say a typical training day for you, 19 years old, right? And, uh, you know, just on the cusp of chasing your dreams, what is, what's like your routine? How do you go about your day? Well, like I, I wake up or I go to bed early because, you know, like sleep is the most important thing for an athlete. It's trying to get ahead. So recovery. Got to recover so you can get ahead. Great so job. I try to sleep as early as possible. Um, I wake so up. you're not up all night on Twitter and Instagram, like, nah, you know, just nah. trying to slide in DMs. No, nah, try my best your, not to. Take, you take your valuable time and, and you recover for your next day of training. Yeah. Good. And then, like, just throughout the day, like, I'll start out by coming in here, getting the grind in. And then, like, later on, I'll go to the fields, you know, do ball work, shooting drills, and just, you know, try to play pickup with whoever's there. And then, like, nighttime, like, get another little light lift in, you know. And then, you know, at that point, you need bed. You're tired. Oh, yeah. Back so. to sleep. Word. So what about this uh, PDL? Let's talk about, like, a day in the life of playing a soccer game in the PDL. Where is, like, the, the biggest place you travel to? Talk about some of those, like, cool moments doing that. I mean, just pretty much, like, we had, like, every day, like, in the morning, we'd have, we'd go to St. Luke's and get, like, uh, like a preparation session in, or if it's a day after a game, it's a recovery session, and then usually... So you worked out at St. Luke's? Yeah, cool. we have, like, trainers and do stuff like that, and then pretty much, you know, you travel, and then at nighttime, you know, it's game time. Where's the, where's the furthest place you traveled? Uh, this year, well, we went, we had a conference game in Virginia. Cool. Was, yeah. So. Did you get to play in any sweet venues? Like, what was, like, the best stadium you played in? Um, <clears throat> at... Um, at Virginia, we got to play, like, they had, like, their own, like, stadium because they're affiliated with a professional team in England, 
So like they fund them like a lot of money. So they had like their own like stadium and like that's awesome fan shop. And it was sick. It was a great experience. So summer soccer under the lights. What's that like? How do you get how do you get prepared for like game time? I mean, what's in your headphones? Like, I what's, just, uh, I like to, how do you lace them up? You know, special deodorant, a hair gel. <laughs> what do you do? I mean, like. Same pair of compression shorts every nah, game? definitely not. I just, <laughs> on the, like, the bus ride down, like, I just like to, you know, I like to take a little nap early on and then, like, wake up, like, halfway through the ride with, like, an hour or something left based on how far we're going and just, you know, put my music in, eat a little something, bananas, like, a little protein bar, and then just, you know, like, get my mind right. I watch, like, best players play like I watch like a little clip of like Messi playing yeah and the things that he would do and then I started to visualize like the game at night like me playing and the things I would do like situations that I would be in and how I could work out of them and you know like I just you know see myself like scoring goals and like, nice doing like these nice things and it's cool because you know you just want to get it done now so visualize an like, attack you're already visualize hungry an attack. yeah you can't wait to play nice that's amazing. So, you know, another thing about you is just, like, your passion, like you said. So, what, like, what's your why? Like, why why try so hard? You know, you speak Arabic. You're, you're in a country where, like, that's a huge commodity. But, you know, you're, you're always all in on soccer. Like, where does that come from? I mean, it, it started, like, when I was young. Like, I watched my family struggle a lot. And, like, I knew, like that one day I wanted them to, you know, have a good life, be able to rest. You know, I watched my parents work seven days a week, like morning till night, and I would have to babysit my little sister, and like, I was too young to do anything about it, but you know, I always watched on TV, like the big stars who make millions, you know, from doing what they love, and I decided that's what I wanted to do, and you know, like it became my passion, I worked hard, and then, like unfortunately I had some big, like minor setbacks with injury, but, like, I once had a doctor tell me that I'll never be able to play again. Dang. And that's just, that was like a little trigger. I said, yeah. you know, like. Added a chip on the shoulder, huh? Yeah. Got to prove him wrong. It made me, it made me hungry. It made me want to, it made me want it that much more. Yeah. Like, that adversity, like. And so now I just have that mindset of, like, you went through all this. You've been through all that. Like, you just can't give up now. Nice. Nice. That's awesome, man. It's it's a pleasure to have you around and see you grind. Like when you work out, it makes me instantly want to just like get after it too. And uh, you know, I've seen you like encourage little kids around the gym, and it's uh, it's been it's been amazing just to see your passion, and your progression. Um, anything else you want to add? Um, Shout outs. Who do we got? Of course, my mom, my dad. You know, I love them. My little sister and little brother. Also, uh, my coaches that helped me along the way. Um, Coach Morales right here. And you know, <laughs> my guy over there. Coach Garland? Yes, sir. Um, just, I have a lot to be thankful for. Like, I wouldn't be here without any of these people, you know. Like, I'm just an athlete. And at the end of the day, like, if I don't have all these people supporting me, believing in me, and, you know, giving me their wisdom and helping me get ahead, like, I wouldn't be where I am. So I'm just, I'm really thankful for all the people in my life, starting with my parents, of course. Word, baby. Keep making gains. You keep making gains, too. Hit that thumbs up button as hard as you possibly can. Subscribe to the channel. But for now, signing off from Making Gains TV.